some conversations will be mind-blowing and you'll sit there and you'll have the most profound change. Hello. Hi, Janice. Hello. Who are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Oh, it is so amazing to see you. It's good to see you. And here we are, both in England. I know. Finally. <laughs> finally. Finally. Both at the same place at the same time for an extended period of time. It's a bit crazy, isn't it? So yeah, the way, it is. I'm just going to tell you, the way that I do this is it's very uh -huh. informal. So I think we're just going to leave this in because yeah, like, that's fine, yeah, so that's we're, fine. Just roll, we're just rolling from here so for everyone you know how we do you know yeah, how we do absolutely. <laughs> for everyone that's listening it's just to say that normally we're in Antigua at the same time right <laughs> right 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 so I guess the first thing I want to ask because you can share that what's it like having left Antigua to come here and be here right now how's that mm. feeling right decision um, I'm definitely going to say yes. Um, and not even just given the current climate of what's happening back in Antigua. This is just a personal decision. Um, trying to progress, trying to accomplish certain things by a certain age, and also to put certain things in place for my daughter, who's now 10. Yikes. Um, <laughs> but definitely, um, definitely the right move, the right time. I was certainly very apprehensive about it. I know you and I would have had several off-camera conversations we did, about it. We did it and have several like, chats about different... Janice, oh, I'm making the right decision, you know. Um, but so definitely, yes. definitely yes. the right decision, the right time, um, the right place, the right people, because I have a small little village um, of people that have been helping me to readjust. Um but definitely, definitely the right move. Um, a lot of people, I, I was met with a lot of negativity. Why are you moving now? What, in Antigua? Why, in Antigua, yeah. Um, a lot of people in England are trying to get out of England because of, you know, lockdown and da da da, da. Like, well, I, I live a lockdown life, so it's, it's okay. Like, I'm not going out, you know, I'm not. The most that I was doing in Antigua, um, an eight to five job, and after work, I'd go to sing out. The yeah. most that I do miss about Antigua, besides obviously family and friends, the beach. The beach the and beach the river. The beach, <laughs> the beach is my zen place, you know. Um, but after the beach, it would be my band. I miss, I really miss, like I cry weekly thinking oh. about my band. I miss my band. My band has been my family for the last 17 years of my life. So, but outside of that, this is the right place for me to be right now. Right now. So with, with regard to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick on the band thing then, because obviously okay. people, people are tribe is really important. Yes. So yes. Are you staying connected to them via chatting and how Oh, I video them? call them on gig nights to see cool. what's happening. <laughs> what's, who's going singing? <laughs> what's going on? What are y'all doing? What are y'all wearing? Yeah, I am definitely, I definitely keep connected. I'm still in the group chat. They haven't kicked me out yet. Cool. Uh, but we definitely do keep in touch, yes. So in terms of the music, so I guess what I actually should do really, for the sake of the people listening to this that don't know you, kind of give yeah, me, give, give, us, give us the, well, I'm going to let you explain. Okay. I, so I know you as, as a singer, as a broadcaster, as a right. host, those are all the guises that I've met you in and know right. you. Right, right. I know there's probably a whole bunch of other layers. That right, know, right. But we're going to delve into, but I right. guess now you could say, this is me, and this is this who is I'm me. Like this is me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Patrice Martin, and I was born and raised in Antigua and Barbuda. Um, I'm a British citizen, so I'm here now. Um, tapping into all sorts of opportunities that can be made available to me. Um, but my life would have started very busy at a very early age. At six years old, um, I remember my mother coming home from Lolita's, that's the fabric cloth um, store in town. Um, and she came home with these mice, a, a, a group of six mice dolls dressed in national madras. Um, and at six years old, I had a storybook that that was you know synonymous with the mice 
So she brought the mice home and she's like, you know, you're going to read a story. And at six years old, I have no idea. You know, I'm just reading. She encouraged me to read a lot, more than math, more than social studies and science. She encouraged me to read a lot from an early age. Um, My aunt up here told me that she remembers me sounding broadcast type from as early (laughs) as four years old, from as early as four years old. She's like, this little girl can read. All right, fine. So at six years old, I met Mitzi and Howard Allen. Um, Hammer Films and Tiga, and they are very instrumental in where I am in my media career today. Um, so at six years old, they propped me up onto this this table and told me, you know, read your story when we tell you to go. Okay. okay. I'm not realizing there's a huge camera set up with big fancy lights. I'm just told to read a story. So I read my story, and each each time I mention one of the different mice in the story, I pick up the mice, and I'm like, hey, ha, ah. and, and it became very interesting. Mitzi apparently was very blown away by this six-year-old, um, and so she just kind of stuck to me ever since. But even after my mom passed in 2008, like, Mitzi waited a little while, allowed me to grieve and go through that process, and then popped back up, and she said, your mother made me promise that I'm always going to look out for you in your media career. And so we've been inseparable ever since. Cool. However, um, I was blessed with not only the gift of gab, as my mother and my aunt would put it, but I was also blessed with the singing ability. And so my music teacher, when I auditioned for Christ the King High School in first form, he kept me like an hour in the audition and everybody else just went in, sang two, three lines and they left. But he kept me there for like an hour. Mind you, this is first form. It's like 11, 12 years old. Voice is not developed yet. But he kept, he heard something. He grilled me, Janice. When I say grilled <laughs> me, shout out to Father Robert Johnson. Grilled me. I mean, every single day after school, everybody left at 1.30. I don't know what leaving school at 1.30 feels like because I was there every day, Monday to Friday, sometimes Saturday until four and five in the afternoon. When I got to fourth form, I started singing in competitions around the island and obviously one for the school. So that was, you know, very good. The best school on island, Christ the King High School. Um, and it just kind of took off from there that when I finished Christ the King, Um, In 2004, we were singing as a part of this choir recital thing for a a local teenage pageant or something. It was at Multipurpose Center. And I was singing a solo. The guys in my band were the ones who were doing the sound and the engineering for that show. So they heard me singing. And mind you, I'm waiting for all the contestants to come out and I'm singing the song, constant repeat, while they're coming out, modeling, doing their evening dress, whatever. And the band was there like, no, who is this girl? This girl, I was 17 years, 16. No, I was 17 because the show was in July. My birthday's in July. So I finished school at 16, turned 17. And they're like, no, this, 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 something about this girl. There's something there. Something about this girl. And so one of the band members worked with my uncle at Liat and somebody told them, hey, that's so-and-so's niece. And they were like, oh, that's Robin's niece. Oh, great. I'm going to talk to Robin at work on Monday. They went and they inquired um, about me and my uncle gave them my mom's number and I've been singing with them ever since. Um, Just just like that. I mean, the connection was just, it really was inevitable. Like like we were meant to be together. Um, The way we gel when we perform, the way we we, we converse when we're not performing. Like it's just such a family unit that even when I introduce the band, I still say the power union family, you know, because we're not just a band. Like there's so much more to us. Um, and then you would have also seen and heard me with Vincent Blaze at Sugar Ridge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vince, I have known forever. Um, we, we, we grew up in the same church. We were raised Catholic um, and we've always been involved and crossed paths musically. Um, But about 2014, he called me and he said, you know, I think it's time we start to put a little repertoire together and let's let's push ourselves out there. Ever since then, it's been Carlisle Bay. It's been Sugar Ridge, our number one hotspot, and Jimby Bay. Um, And we've done a few other places, but mostly Sugar Ridge has really been um, our home base, our home base. And so I've just been media, music, media, music. So tell me how how the media side happened then, because I'm trying to think. I probably heard (laughs) singing, 
Yeah, but, then, but you pro- you would more know that, me from television. Yeah, and I'm thinking, was it television and singing first? I don't know. So it was how- it was, it was <laughs> television first with Mitzi and them at six years old. Um, I started singing at eight years old in primary school, and my training has just been neck and neck with both of them. So I've been growing up with both, and the skills have always been harnessed um, and kind of you know, tailored because I'm a bit of a wild spirit. <laughs> I mean, she would tell everybody like, hey, That's she's why we a... find, right? <laughs> we we mesh so well, Janice, because we're so free spirited. Um, life is to be enjoyed, right? Um, and who really cares what, what people think? Um, and so I've always walked neck and neck with music and media. Um, when I got to 2014, um, Mitzi was actually responsible for me getting into ABS, which is the local television station. Um, and Mitzi said, you know, I, I will talk to the boss about trying to get you on the morning show. Yeah. Um, Brucella Marsh Sutton had just left. Um, and those are some, those are some shoes that can never be filled. And I thought, mm, I don't know that I can come behind Brew and, and do justice to the show. Um, but Mitzi kept telling me, like, you don't even worry about that. Like, you just go just be yourself. Just go and be yourself. And yeah. so the way that it happened was that um, baptism by fire, as we would call it in Antigua. Yeah. Um, and so Mrs. Erna Mae Brathwit had just kind of like, she called and she responded to my email and she said, uh, how's Wednesday morning for you? And I thought, mm, it's early morning. <laughs> I don't get up so early. And you know, is this going to work? But I got up the Wednesday, I went, William Dorsett was there, James Richards was there, and we had really good banter. Um, I came off the show that morning, obviously I've never done the morning show before, but I came off the show that morning and the supervisor, Loretta Pilgrim, shout out to the chief, said, "Um, yeah, you're going to come back tomorrow. So basically, so, so there was no dry run, it was just like straight in and do this. Stay so, in and do so this. Antigua style, right? <laughs> you can do it. Too. I mean, I mean, how could you prove unless you're baptized by fire, right? True. Um, yeah. So I True. think we've grown accustomed to that in our culture, but um, baptism by fire. And that was the December 2014. Um, and I was officially signed to ABS the February, but I've been on television since December 2014. Cool. Mm-hmm. And then, and then. I mean, my, I think my last big memory of us and TV mm-hmm. was probably actually at the dockyard for maybe the Antiguan girls coming in. You came to us after that. You came to the studio after that because we started been... calling you for the, the psychology yeah. um, talks. And we were like, That's Janice, right. eh, how yeah. do you feel about so-and-so? And we were really digging deep with mental health. Um, though yeah. that's my last memory of you because the girls came um a while back and we had yeah. talked we had we had, I know, we had talked I know to you multiple the, times since then yeah so I've been on the tv lot since then but I just yeah yeah I just remember when the girls were coming in uh-huh. it was like your energy and your presence was yes, just yes. like huge and big and yes, exactly yes. the way that I would expect yes 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 that was that was that was really a huge time for us because um it, there was just so much noise. There was so much buzz, the atmosphere. Um, I don't think the dockyard has seen that many people yeah. Yeah, ever, ever. No. Not even for um, reggae in the park. Like, no. not even then. No. I, I, I think, mean, I, and just Antigua flags everywhere. Like, I, I got say. goosebumps, like, just remembering that, it, still, you know. Girls bought that because everybody. They brought that. Like, oh, oh, my God. Look what they, they brought said. that. I mean we didn't we didn't care that it was first or second or third or seventh or whatever in their category we just cared that they came back like for you to decide to leave Antigua and from Canary Islands back to Antigua I mean your boat capsizes there are sharks and whales and eels and all sorts of different things and you are out here just doing your thing it's time to fix the boat crystal jumps off the boat she cleans the bottom of the boat and we just kind of like isn't that a man really like why why is a woman doing that yeah so for any uh, so for anyone listening that doesn't know what we're talking about we're talking about the talisker whiskey whiskey Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. they literally row 
in teams or stupidly on your own. Stupidly, <laughs> foolishly, incredibly, whatever it is. Right, whatever um, that is. Amara, all the way to Antigua. Right. And it's like a yearly event. And right, right. It, you know, if Antigua... We've had a few Antigua teams um, over the years. Um, we just had the, the peers come in last yeah. year. So it was, it was just really amazing to witness and to watch um, how much Antiguans could come together at a time like that. Um, so it, it really is heartbreaking to see where we are today you now in light yeah. of the pandemic, um, the passing of Sir Lester Bryant Bird yesterday, just so many different personalities, so many views on different things that it's, it's really, it's a tough time. It's a let's, tough time let, for us. Let's use the the now famous Michelle Obama words of pivot, right? If mm-hmm. ever there was pivotal points in, I mean, across the world, mm-hmm. in different ways for different people, but definitely mm-hmm. Antigua and Barbados. Right. And, you know, for anyone, this is, I've been keeping this secret from my mother, actually. <laughs> and, and I'm going to, and I'm going to reference like the, the activities that took place with the police. Right, on, right. On Sunday night, so I'm like, right. I'm not mentioning that because then she'll say, "Oh my gosh, I'm not sure." Oh my gosh, exactly. And I'm exactly. like, "Well, it's okay because we don't go to St. John's." So for anyone listening, right. and part part of the agenda, right? And I I am calling it an agenda in, in mm-hmm. Antigua is very much mm-hmm. to give people pretty much no choice other than to right. vaccinate, right? Vaccinate, right? Right. Um, so people gathering peacefully together, it would seem, mm-hmm. and. If, if we if we go by the evidence that gratefully phones gave us yeah, it yes been, yes and I might be having a biased view I'm not sure but it seems to me it was pretty peaceful and it mm-hmm. was very peaceful and it seems to me that it was pretty hardcore to bring you to let me that. let me interject there and say that they also applied for permission to have this um peaceful so rally I, so I, um, and protest possible. whatever they applied for it two weeks yeah. prior to the actual day and they were denied yeah. um and so I think that started the energy even before this sure. peaceful protest began right well, it's, it's because how happening. is everybody else gathering how yeah. are you not allowing us to gather is this like a predetermined decision absolutely you know so that would have sparked the energy prior to this for even sure. taking place right <laughs> for sure um, and so I, I have watched um, what has been going on, what has been said. Um, I'm vaccinated, right? Because I knew I made a decision to come here. You and I spoke about whether or not we were going to be vaccinated. Uh, is it necessary for us to get vaccinated to come to the UK? Because the cases are just mind boggling over here. Um, yeah. So Janice, do you think that it was necessary for me to get vaccinated? And we had those conversations, you and I. So yeah. I am not against it. No, but that's and my just, personal decision. Yeah. And I just I just want to say that for people that are listening, every from the moment this all unfolded, because as you well know, mm-hmm. I was back here at the beginning of all the COVID all of this. Yes. My, yeah. My father passed, blah, blah, blah. And then I found myself in this space of oh my God, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna want to travel. And of course right. I'm gonna travel. And then for me, my whole story has always been if anyone asks me if you are living in a country that you know you want to leave you are going to have no choice other than to vaccinate exactly whether it be today six months from now a year from now that is going to have to be it i still believe that as time as this unfolds it will become nigh on impossible yes yes move freely unless yes. they flash their vaccination card so exactly, exactly. What you say it's an individual's choice and i and i right. think hey, that's what i find abhorrent with all this because i still mm-hmm. it is an individual's choice to yes. vaccinate or not to vaccinate yes um I agree with you there uh I I really I rarely disagree with with any point that you've made because we're sort of a very similar spirit um but what I'm struggling with at this point is um the mandate to push it across to everybody forcefully the way that you're doing it the way they're doing it right they're pushing back against you and there's a reason for that. Now, the Delta variant is, is wreaking havoc on the world, but taking the COVID-19 vaccine, whether it's AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, this one out of Cuba, 
the other yeah. one out of Russia, what are the 50 million types of vaccines that we have for COVID-19 in a short nine month span. Um, it doesn't prevent us from getting it. It may or may not prevent us from dying. And according to the reports that are spinning in the media, a lot of the persons who have contracted it in recent times, the Delta variant that is, um, are vaccinated, are vaccinated, yeah. are vaccinated. And so those who are unvaccinated are saying, well, why do I need to join you again? Because you still have it. I'm yeah. not spreading it to you because I don't have it. Yeah. So what is the argument here? And I hear the points and I agree with the points completely. I just knew that my path was different. I love to travel. And my, a friend of mine in the band will say, you're so unpredictable. Like today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. Like you just love a plane. I love a plane. And so I knew that I was, after a while when I realized things were dying down slowly and people were returning to travel, I made the personal decision to get vaccinated because I knew I was going to be in airports, on flights, you know, mingling, going out, doing things, returning to some level of normalcy in my life. Um, I made that decision. However, I don't want anybody telling me what to do, when to do, because, you know, I'm a rebellious nature. Oh, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell yeah, me what to do. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll get, get to it. Track. I'll get to it when I get to it. You don't tell me what to do. I've, I've got it. Right. Um, but the way in which things are happening slowly in Antigua and Barbuda with at the time, it was just about eight cases out of some 90,000 people. Yeah. Us here in the UK now can be like, well, I have numbers. well, let's talk numbers. Because last week, Thursday was what, 31,000 people in one yeah. day? Yeah. Let's, let's talk numbers. Absolutely. And so for me, now that I'm here and I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, so we wear masks when we go out, but... We don't have to unless we're entering a building. There's a level of freedom. There's no forcing things and pushing things down your throat. You get vaccinated, you don't get vaccinated. Okay. Um, but in a small place like I can like Antigua, I can see you two or three people start to gather, then it becomes 25, then it becomes 75, then it's 105. Yeah. And if they're not wearing their masks, if they're not doing certain things then I can see how and that would spin out of control. Yeah. And I think the thing is, though, for the sake of people listening that know nothing about Antigua, mm -hmm. we're talking about a socio-economic climate that has yes. been decimated. Yes, in, yes. In, and, and still under a curfew, right? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, so, state of emergency, uh, 11 p.m. Absolutely. And... and I, you know, and this has been going on in varying time since the end of March last year. Yes, uh, yes. And yes. with a loss of the amount of jobs, jobs, etc. Et you can, I, I can see, you can see why people are kicking back, right? Oh, I, I absolutely can. I don't disagree yeah. one bit. Absolutely. Um, I was telling a friend yesterday, I said, you know, if I were in the police force, now obviously I know nothing about how these things work. Right. Yeah. But the current climate between the people and the police in Antigua and Barbuda, it's so damaged yeah. that they needed to be cautious with how they were going to approach that situation. And so for me, you knew from social media that this march was happening, whether you gave them permission or not. Yeah, yeah. So sure. What I would have done was make my presence known. There are 40 of you, 50 of you, 60 of you, how many ever the commission softly, of softly approach versus here we are. Here we are. And we're bulldozing. No, there's a joke. Oh. There's a joke that um, one of our previous prime ministers had said that we're not a reading public. And there's always That's that joke that Antiguans are not a reading public, right? So I know with, with anger in me, because I wouldn't have worked since March last year, yeah. um, the, the constant pushing this vaccine mandate down my throat when... I can't even eat. Absolutely. Incentives for getting the vaccine. Now, yeah. I have an acquaintance whose daughter won land for getting the vaccine. Wow. Now, I know their backstory and I'm extremely happy for them. But with those types of incentives, it makes you question. It, it really makes you question. And so I, 
I, with all of that, knowing all of that, and I'm working in the police force, like I would have not, I, w- I wouldn't have exercised my authority in that manner. Yeah. Um, I would have brought a loudspeaker. That's one. Two, I would have gone to the organizers of the event and I would have shared, look, listen, very firmly and respectfully, we are here today. We know that you're having this thing regardless. We're yeah. going to allow you to have your peaceful protest. However, the first sign of disrespect Nobody's wearing their mask. There's not enough social distancing. It's getting out of control. We are going to take over from here. That is communicated to the organizers of the event. That's the first thing. Yeah. Okay. We're here regardless. So when people come and they see that the police are there and they're not troubling you, they're not interfering with you. They're reminding you, pull up your mask, pull it up over your nose. Respect thing, right? That's it. That's it. That's that. That's, that's the way that I felt. It should have been handled. And if after that, we still, we don't care. We're disrespecting you. We're spitting in your face. We're throwing stones at you. If that then happens, anything after that, because you've already communicated that this is what is going to happen, then you're well within your rights to do so. There were people who are single mothers that walked with their children. I know. There are people who were coming from the hotels on a work bus that were at the bus station that had nothing to do with this. And people in the, people in their homes, right? Literally. People that, in, literally. No, literally no, the home, area. I'm, I'm getting tear gassed and all the I'm area doing that, home. The area that we're talking about, the houses are so close in it that if you throw a stone, you're hearing it five, six, seven, eight houses down from you because yeah. it's so close. You unleashed tear gas. What was the motive? What was the motive? It's, it is, it is kind of shocking. Wait, and it's, it's led me to think. So yesterday, somebody mm-hmm. linked me to something where a group here overtook the BBC. Did you see that? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm like, wow. You know, but you see, yeah. you see, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We don't understand, and this is per- clearly a personal opinion, right? But whether I'm vaccinated, not vaccinated, I'm still massively conscious that we all deserve to make the our right. decisions. Yeah. We have yeah. our own rights. Yeah. Yeah. So when these things are kicking off, these these people, and by that mm-hmm. I mean people that are just like, oh, they're anti-vaxxers, they're this, they're that, and I'm they're like, that they're troublemakers, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, actually, these are the, a lot of these people are people who are doing the real research. They're looking yes. at the agendas. They're looking at the policies that places like the UK are passing. That, yes, yes. So if they actually understand the potential agenda. A lot uh, more than those yeah. who are pushing the vaccine mandate. Maybe, maybe a lot more than those people that are just watching the BBC or reading the Daily Mail. Yes, yes, <laughs> no, yes. Not that we're supposed yes. to say those things. So, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So with all of this in context then, coming to the UK, definitely the right decision. <laughs> I, uh, Regardless. Um, I mean, home will always be home. You know what I mean? But um, as a single mother, you kind of have to look at things and put things into perspective. Like, where are you now and where do you want to be? And how can you get there? And so... Mitzi would have encouraged me to write, you know, write it down, make it plain. I listen to a lot of Steve Harvey. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, write it down and make it plain has been a message that has just been resounding in my head for months. And I couldn't ignore it anymore. And so I got pen to paper and I sat down and I started writing. And in this day and age where everything is technologically based, like, is she still writing? Writing's great, though. It's, I love it. It's, it's a release for awesome. me. And so I, I started writing it down and making it plain, putting it into the universe. What is it that I wanted? What did I want to achieve? What do I want to do? Um, I've attempted to return to university multiple times from Antigua. Um, and for whatever reasons, um, permission denied. I hate when people don't deny me, that people deny me permission. Like, like that just sparks something yeah. in me. It really sparks something in me. Um, so permission denied, um, all sorts of different issues, um, just, just way too many different things that were happening. And it's just kind of like, if you were to move, what are the odds of you returning to school? 
what yeah. what would what, what what then would become possible yeah um and so i knew that that was priority um obviously education levels for my daughter i knew that that also was priority uh, more than anything else, anything to benefit her. Um, I think you would have seen one or two of her creations for her doll clothes that she can sit and cut a pair of her jeans and turn it into an, a doll outfit. No training, just not like watching that. YouTube, just like that. That she got from my mother because I can't cut straight for for anything. I have to pencil it out with a ruler and cut according to the pencil. But she just cuts and she started at age seven. She's 10. She's going to be 11 in a few months. And I was like, no, what are the opportunities for her to do things like that here? Yeah. The opportunities aren't there. Um, I've been with my band for 17 years. I've been with, with Vince for about five, six years. What next? What's the next level? Yeah. What's the next phase? And so when you're when you're progressive like that and you, you start to become uncomfortable in your current situation, if you're not living your truth and if you're not exercising all of these skills that you've been blessed with. And so I'm like, OK, um, let's try. Let's dabble in something for six months and see what we can get into. Um, and the network has just been growing. Um, the opportunities have just been available um, you put your energy out there into the universe and watch it repay you in kind, Absolutely. you know, watch it repay you in kind. So, so what are you dabbling in? And have you, have you, applied, <laughs> have you applied for uni then? Cause I know we talked about this. We talked about it. Um, I'm settling my daughter first, I'm organizing her okay. first. I have done my research. I have gone to the university of choice. Um, I do have all the correct brochures and so on, but I also need to be here for a little while first before um, I can qualify as a national for school, but um, there's nothing to stop me or restrict me from doing it. There's no one to say, oh, no, you can't go now because um, or no, you can't go at all. Um, there's none of that. There's none of that. The opportunities are endless, especially in COVID. And even after speaking to multiple people over here, they said, you know, COVID honestly is the best time. It's the best time to come. Lots of things, right? Yeah. They, they've just been like there's just too many things to do and it's like okay how am I going to get all of this done there's the London Eye there's the aquarium there's the zoo there's yeah. this there's that um the cinemas is my daughter and I are movie fanatics um the cinemas are just mind-blowing really I was say, compared to where I meant to <laughs> don't you dare <laughs> the first time I went there I thought I was gonna die I thought I was gonna die I just remember because I love going. To, I, we're we're big on movies. We're big. On we're movies. very big. We're very big on movies. It's um, always been a cool experience. And I just yes, remember the first yes. time I went to Antigua, I was like, okay, so I'm watching a like over 18s film, and there's like a woman <laughs> behind me with all her kids who are like less oh. than 10, and and they're all chatting, talking, and yeah, they're talking yeah. to the film, and I'm like. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is my. Plea. I will. I'm I like, will admit. I will. Shut up! We're <laughs> here to watch a movie. We're not in your front room. <laughs> I will. I will admit, though, that part of my 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 upbringing included the Deluxe Cinemas, where there was the pit. And yeah. part of the movie experience in Antigua has always been the talking. It has always been the conversation between the people and the movie going on. It's an experience, Janice. This is just what we do. I, it's an I, experience. I, I can live, I actually, as the years have gone by, I can yes. live with that part of the experience. Yes, yes. I, yes. Can't, I can't live with a baby crying behind no, me. No, 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 and, no. And, no. Phone, and phone conversations going on. No, then I, no, then I'm no, like, no, no, no. Come on, come on. Like, yes. I was actually very surprised when we went to the cinema for the first time up here and the lady came with a microphone and she said, hey, hello, everybody. Good yeah. evening. Um, we're asking you to turn your phones off. That's right. There was complete silence. Silence. Like, yeah. We didn't even want to laugh. Like, we watched yeah. Fast and the Furious and didn't even want to laugh like there were moments in there where Tyrese was just being complete Tyrese and my daughter and I chuckled a little bit and felt uncomfortable because we were disturbing the people yeah, next to us complete silence like they are zoomed into the movie there's no talking you're eating your snacks and everything but there's no talking there's no nothing I mean back in Antigua you know there'd be a man or two that would crack two jokes and like you know and that means that y'all are lying 
but there would there would be some sort of interaction that would just get everybody laughing and you know but that is something that I would miss to be honest because I've grown accustomed to it I've been doing that since I was a little girl but I also embrace the silence in this new current climate you know so I can really take in the movie and pay attention to what's going on so and six and a half a dozen for me I I appreciate both I appreciate both but you're busy kind of just settling into the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And yes. Know people. And yes. I think um, the day-to-day I mean, runnings, getting things done, knowing where to go, um, where do you go to do what, to get what done. Um, school will be starting in a couple of weeks and it's her final year of primary school. Ooh, yikes. So it's... So how, it's does, how does school pan out then? Because I'm guessing that potentially she's going to go to a school that's much bigger than what she might have been used to. Yes, yes, yes. Much bigger, um, much more culturally diverse. Um, And so I'm excited, but still apprehensive about seeing how she will handle this. I mean, I know my daughter is is a badass, really. Um, If you can use that term. (laughs) (laughs) Um, More so my mom's personality shines through in her. um, And so I always feel like, Although the timing may have not been perfect for everyone else, the timing was perfect for me when I had her because there's a lot of my mom in her. Yeah. Um, and so um, she, uh, a lot of people might disagree with me dis- describing her as a badass, but my daughter really is a phenomenal child. Um, everybody says that about their child and that's allowed, but she overcomes things so quickly. Um She's such a fighting spirit. She's very bold. You know, she's very, very, very bold. A lot bolder than I was at that age. So she um, hasn't had any issues settling into the fact that you've left her? I asked her. I asked her. I said, I mean, her dad is expending all of his time crying because she's over here. And she's just like, eh, he'll be okay. He'll, eh, he'll be all right. You know, especially when she saw the he'll, cinema, he'll, she's like, he'll yeah. Yeah, he'll he'll be fine. He's an adult. He'll, he'll be okay. He'll be you fine. know? And, and she's not the only child. So the, the other two siblings will keep him busy, but she's just like, yeah. she's the one who actually said to me, are we not, we're not moving? Like, can't we move? I don't like it here anymore. She's the one that actually came to me with that conversation at nine years oh. old. And to hear her say that, I'm like, what's wrong? What's, what's, say, I'm bored. I'm not, I, I don't like it. I'm not, you know, and to hear her say that, I never would have dreamed of living outside of Antigua at all. Um, you, I mean, when you say you go to school and come back, like it's really not deemed as living away. No. You went to school. You went to school. You know what I mean? But now that you're actually uprooting your entire life and making a decision to jump ship, so to speak, with your child, it changes the scope of things. Um, and she has just been, she's fine. She's fine. Like, there are a couple of nights in the summer, Janice, where it was 41 degrees. And I was just kind of like, Janice, this is not <laughs> summer. This is not entirely summer. No. But she embraced it. She wasn't cold. She, w- I'm over here like three blankets and a Absolutely. quilt. And she's just like, mm, it's not cold. Yeah. I love it. You know, so it is, I'm it's- excited to see what the upcoming school year will be for her. Absolutely. And it's so cool, I think, for a child to have had the upbringing that she's had so far in Antigua. Yes, in Antigua, yes. So she's always got that. Now you're here in the UK. And who knows what her choices will be in the future. Exactly, exactly. Through two great comparisons, right? Right, right, right. Way of living, which is, you know, that's awesome. Yes, yes. Um, And I also I also always said that if I were to leave, I would leave just when she was either finishing primary school or had already finished primary school. And we've managed to make it that far. So she's had a really strong foundation. Um, Kudos to the school that she went to. They were very, very strong and firm in her foundation. Um, But I think it's just time for us to move on to the next phase. She's so creative. You know, um, no surprise there because she comes from a creative family, yeah. but she's so creative at such a young age. I never started until mid-teens yeah. and here she is just running with it at age seven, now moving into age 11. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, really, really intrigued to see what she will do 
with the opportunities that are presented before say, her. That, that is one thing about being somewhere like the UK, the opportunities, yeah. clubs, endless. Groups. Endless. It's, yeah, it's literally this, endless. It's almost like, okay, we can't do all of this. What are we not going to do? You know, and I remember that all those million years. Yes, yes. You got to make it work for you. You yeah. got to make it work. For you, you get to the point where you kind of want to expose them to different things. And yes, and then it's the point like, okay, child, you got to choose which ones are you have to choose. Where, which way are we going? Where are we yeah. going? And for me, remembering how my parents raised me I mean my dad was like oh she's too, too involved in too many different things but when he saw what I could do he's like okay yeah she kind of doesn't have a choice she has to be involved in all these different things yeah. um and so yes academics extremely important but there's a huge academic extracurricular activity social life balance that needs to take place in order for your child to be well-rounded and that's how I was raised I know nothing more that I know nothing different you know um I played netball I sang on choir I yeah. still had to train and do vocal vocal classes I was a part of young leaders in the debate team um I still was involved in everything but you know hence my love for event management um public relations and public speaking it's next to nothing you know so I mean always involved in something just every time something came up my name was called and it's just kind of like ah but I never once thought I did too much. I always yeah. thought I didn't do enough. Yeah. And so when the process started in Antigua, the, the discomfort that I used to call you and talk to you about, and like, Janice, yeah. I know I'm, I'm not, I don't have an appointment, but I like, I really need you at this point. Like we need to talk. And so our relationship developed way beyond the television screen. Yeah. And I just kept telling you, like, I'm so confused. I'm so uncomfortable and I'm so confused. But when that level of discomfort comes to you, like, you know, you need to make a change. You Absolutely. know, something needs to change. I, and I, 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 call, I call that getting the call. And I think that yeah, yeah. we get the call, we get the call. We, we notice the feelings and we put the yeah. thoughts aside. Yes, we're supposed to do this and I'm where I'm supposed to be. So we ignore it. And yeah. then the call keeps fucking it keeps coming back, back. It keeps Absolutely. coming back and it's just kind of like okay yeah. leave me alone like I'm, I'm working a regular it. job I have a child and she's going to school I'm singing yeah. four times a week I am busy yeah you're not busy doing what you're supposed to be doing I, I say, this is not it this is not it so this is not so it this is about creating the it's for you and, yeah. and yeah. for your daughter so yes. If you could, if you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a really stupid question. If you could oh. land your dream job right today, what do you think it would be? You mentioned the organization. Well, there are actually two because there's always been media and music. Yeah. Um, Britain's Got Talent, number okay. one. I don't need to win it. I just need to make it to the stage. Yeah. Um, cool. And I think that you can would. For it then. Yeah, yeah. And working for the BBC. Cool. Working Which for the you'd BBC. Be brilliant at. Thank sure. you. I think so. I think sure. so. <laughs> I think Mitzi would be happy to hear that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Mitzi, Mitzi. But those are my two, and and you see how huge those two are. Yeah, huge. They're really huge, and so that would make me feel like everything I would have done over the years and the sacrifices my mom and my dad made for me to have that exposed life at such an early age, um, exposing me to, to to big, huge names in film and television, like like Hamel having them as my personal mentors in my back pocket to call any time of day or night, it makes all of that worth it. You know, look at where she is now. I don't feel like I've accomplished anything. I don't feel like I have even started to walk my dream. I, I, I know I have a voice and I can speak and I can write and I can script and I can this and I can that, I can dance, I can pat my head and rub my stomach all at the same time. But what else? What, what is more that, is there? What and more? I, and I, th I think the answer to that is there's plenty more. And it's just... Exactly. It, it was really interesting. So, you know Gemma Handy? Yes, I know Gemma, of course. <laughs> so, I recorded a conversation with her sister, Sophie, last okay, week. Okay, Sophie's okay. She's an amazing artist. Okay. I love the things that she does. And one of the get bits, I'm using it as a snippet for our conversation marketing purposes, because she basically said that she believes everybody should have the opportunity to do a one year art foundation course. Mm. I was like, wow. And she said, okay. yeah, because she said, basically, we all have creative 
creativity abilities in yeah yeah I would never ever get the chance so it would no. be and I was like I was like wow yeah wouldn't that be cool to just go and because you know if you say to me oh Janice you're creative I said to her I think I'm really creative in I can I can see how things should be and I can bring them together right and I can do all of that but I wouldn't necessarily say I'm creative <laughs> it's something I've been playing yeah. in my mind so, am I. Right. so when she said that I was like yeah that would be really cool Mm-hmm. how cool would mm-hmm. that be to just give yourself the time to right. explore different things and I guess in a way that's what you're doing now so you yes. have things that you really want to do yes yet you've got your time to say well this interests me this intrigues me what about right. this? I don't and, like this maybe this yeah and being mm-hmm. in the UK let, let's be honest there's plenty of free things as adults yeah. we can go plenty and try. yes yes so you know literally in a way it's like the world is is your own oyster here yes yes to, yes to explore it all which is agreed awesome agreed. agreed agreed I've got to say you're you're looking really good and it's really good to see you so I'm thinking Thank like you, we, we need to catch up before I, my plan is probably to go to Antigua mid-September with my mum for a couple of okay months. okay okay and, you know um, a- I'll be down there in December um it will be busy season um I'll be there in December um my ba- I haven't told them the date that I'm coming and I won't either I'll just kind of do an impromptu I'll just rock up <laughs> I just I just you know rock on out um but I'll be there in December um for a little while and um I'm I'm intrigued to see what after spending six months here what oh, going home yeah you've had that experience you've been able to come here a couple of months go back home for a couple of months um come back for a couple of months go back for a couple of months I don't know that I will be doing that but I think uh, the I think, first trip yeah. back will be will be like a, a tell-all you know yeah, the tell-all of I mean, it will confirm me, a lot of things for me absolutely yeah. and I think you, yeah. you need to take that time to sit with yourself I mean for me you know, since last March, mm-hmm. in, my whole world is completely different. Different, yeah, you know, yeah. With my dad checking out, my daughter having having the baby, the grandbaby. Yes, you know, my, my pulls feel really different now. Yes, and yes. it's kind of you know. So, so for me, going back to Antigua for eight weeks and taking my mum is actually a challenge because I'm already thinking, how how on earth? Why would I leave Callie and Nicola? Right, right. And then and then I have to say, well, actually, because it's good for them for me to leave. Right, 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 <laughs> right. And also allows you to recharge the yeah. way that it's necessary. And I think the reason why I deem you so awesome is because oh, you okay. have the moments where you get to recharge. And so I I look at that and I try to pattern off of that. I need to recharge and I may not be able to travel as frequently because obviously we would have commitments that we develop over time. Um, but that recharge is important. Absolutely. Very, very, very important. Um, I may not be able to go to the beach as often in December because it's going to be freaking cold, yeah. but um, <laughs> the water is going to be freaking cold, but just, yeah. I will have a few sea baths. It's it's mandatory that when you go home, you go you go to the beach. Um, but at, there are a few moments where I'll just sit in silence while my daughter spends time with her dad and his family. Um, I'll sit in, in with myself. I'll sit with myself. I'll write. Um, I'll sing. Just kind of really taking it in that I'm back at home um, and what that feels like and what that will mean for the next phase of the new year. I mean, COVID-19 will be turning 22 January yeah. 1 um what does that mean for the next phase for you um what do you want to accomplish in this in this year um in this realm what do you want to do what's next and now that you're here how do you feel how do you chart forward how do you bring your daughter behind you charting forward and that's that's for me what going home will be in December the reset the recharge the reset preparing for COVID 2022 yeah. oh. Do you know what? That's, that's, what you've just said is so awesome that I kind of just want to close our conversation there in a way because that is the perfect way to do yeah. that. Because yeah, we all have to gift ourselves this time where we Indeed. just sit with ourselves and say, okay, what next? And am I right. happy with where I am now? Right. What's working? What's not working? What needs right. to be, What needs dumping? What needs to change completely? Absolutely. Right. So, right. 
That's right. awesome. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for taking You're welcome. time to talk. You're welcome. Thank and you for having me. Well, thank you. And all right, we'll, we'll be will... in touch. Yeah, sure. I will speak yeah. to you soon. Have all right. Thanks, Janice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>